Latin America has been one of the slowest developing regions in the world. Even though most of the countries in the region have a fairly strong democracy and rule of law, the economic development has not been as strong as the political development in this region. As opposed to Southeast Asia that in the past 40 years has been experiencing the biggest economic development in any region. However, this economic development has come with a low political development. In the following video, we're going to analyze development models, followed by each of these regions and potentially answer the questions, why has Latin America development been slower than Southeast Asia's? Let's start with the history. Latin America in the late 50s had a lot of Marxist influence within their political institutions. Many politicians wanted to take back the land from the Americans in order to make them profitable for the people and not for the developed North. This was a great idea, however, the execution of these policies would lead to a stagnant development in Latin America. Raul Perbesh, a Argentinian economist, said that the South, meaning Latin America, was under bad terms of trade. And therefore, Latin America countries needed to place protectionism policies in order to develop their local industries to the point that they would compete with the North's industry. This sort of rationale was widely accepted in Latin America. In the late 60s and 70s, which led to an increase in development at first, many local industries were growing. In the other hand, Southeast Asia followed the expert-led model, which basically underdeveloped socioeconomic factors in the economy to focus wide economic development. For example, Taiwan backtracked their working laws and took off their minimum wage in order to make it cheaper to produce goods and export them to the world. On the other hand, China invested heavily in their big labor population and South Korea invested heavily in their industries. This led to a major surplus in the economies which led to an exponential increase in GDP, which later was used to further development in the case of Taiwan the government invested in technology, South Korea invested heavily in advanced education, however Latin America followed the import substitution model, which they didn't have the same luck. What economists didn't realize in Latin America is that goods are not homogenic. This is to say that something produced in Argentina is not replaceable by something produced in the United States, since quality and brand names play a big role in this. In the early 80s, many Latin American economies had to take out loans, since their GNP was so low, which led to a liquidity problem leading to inflation and unemployment. By the 80s, most countries, including Mexico, switched over to the Southeast Asian model of growth and left behind the import substitution industrialization models. Since it was proven that it didn't develop economies, however, the change was slow and contagious, leading to what many economists call the lost decade. The 1980s is widely considered the lost decade in Latin America, since all regions of the world grew exponentially except for Latin America. In conclusion, Latin America has been suffering from bad economic policies, corruption, and neocolonialism, which has led to a unstable monetary and economic policy. Also with the fact that it, Southeast Asia became a more strategic place for the North after the Cold War and Latin America kind of lost its relevance. Thank you for watching the video. In the description, you can read my journals about monetary policy and political science.